The solar radiation storm has not been seen in 20 years. It's been recorded on Earth. And now flights are being inspected because 10 times level of radiation at 40,000 altitude has been recorded. And here are the neutron monitors for when this happened earlier and what's happening now. Airbus grounding over 6,000 planes of A320s off the runway after uncovering a flaw that could leave pilots unable to steer during certain conditions. Saying this, quote, analysis of a recent event involving an A320 family aircraft has revealed that intense solar radiation may corrupt data critical to the function of flight controls. The UK space weather probes captured the solar radiation spike and are now just releasing this emergency situation. The balloon that they put up in the atmosphere was the monitor and recording system that was able to track these spikes. And if you look here on screen, the radiation levels observed at 40,000 feet on the 11th of November reached almost 10 times normal background level for a short period. Although this did not pose any health concerns, the modeling validation will be crucial in preparing for potential larger events in the future. Historical records, including those obtained through tree rings and ice cores, reveal much more significant events are possible, highlighting the ongoing need for preparedness. So they are now getting more prepared as we see the airlines get ready to fix all of the Airbus planes because of the solar radiation impact. And this was the specific reason they recalled it threatening global flight disruptions. It says bulletin seeing Reuters traced the problem to a flight system called ELAC, elevator and aileron computer, which sends commands from the pilot side uh, stick to elevators at the rear. These in turn control the aircraft's pitch or noise signals. As we go into these events, the preparedness levels are going to get much different. And what we saw was a lot of events occur over this month. And now it's going to get more prepared as they situationally prepare for this event to transpire even more. December, we're looking into what's going to happen. But take a look at all the things that did happen. As all this continues to transpire here, we go into what was occurring during these events. They recorded this in the UK from the Science and Technology Facilities Council when they got the information and data. But then the ESA went a little bit deeper here and there was some recorded blackouts that happened. And it says, despite this geomagnetic storm, minimal impact on critical infrastructure, ESA spacecraft are designed to withstand against radiation and none sustained damage from the storm. However, the event provided opportunity for multiple ESA missions to collect radiation data, which is now being analyzed more. Importantly, the event posed no direct biological risk to humans on Earth. That is what the official information is right now. Yeah, so if we go a little bit further, ground level enhancement was also observed, a rare phenomenon that occurs only once or twice per year these events happen when solar particles are energetic enough to penetrate Earth's magnetic shield. So that's what we experience here. And what are we going to experience? What are they actively preparing for? Now, when I look a little bit deeper into the report that was released, let's go down here and it says, Professor Clive uh, Dyer, an expert in space weather at Surrey Space uh, Center, University of Surrey, said that this was the strongest ground level event we've seen since December 2006. Neutron monitors around the world measured significant increases 
and in conjunction with newly installed UK monitors at Lurwick Goldford, will enable us to map the footprint of the event across the globe. Uh, so again, they're really not telling us what they're doing to get prepared, uh, but are you concerned in the chat about these future events for yourself? Uh, and let me know, give me a yes. If not, then I'll just, I'll just move forward. If you say you are concerned, you say concerned, then I'll just put up some things that's already been put out of what you could potentially do during these events. Now, as all this starts to happen, uh, moving a little bit further into the details here, let's read a little bit more. Most, of, most immediate and significant effects of the event was major disruption of radio communications in regions facing the sun. Following the solar flare, a severe radio blackout was recorded across Europe, Africa, Asia, lasting about 30 minutes to one hour. So that's on the baseline of what you're looking at here. This is all information about just preparedness and confirmed events, no fear at all. So you need to be looking at between an hour, maybe in these events that you could potentially lose power. Obviously, in a more long term event, it would be uh, much more significant up to days. So having that in the mind, thinking like, OK, do I have something for even a few days if some of this stuff happened? Uh, and I'm looking in the chat right now to see what people are saying. All right, I'm going to pull something up for you all here in just a second. But at the same time, as all this is happening, I noticed that and I'm not saying they're directly connected, but I'm saying. Let's take a look at this as we had a 5.1 earthquake hit in Japan just today. Uh, and California just it just has not stopped shaking ever since November hit. We've seen multiple swarms hitting California, hitting areas in Oregon. Specifically here, you can look all across the world right now, though, and see the incoming earthquakes and the seismic activity is at a moderate level today. We've seen consistency though. And what have you seen on the ground there in California? Uh, what has what the shaking events been like? Uh, let me know if there's some seismic activity that you feel is happening that's not been reported on the monitors yet. Now let's look into this right here because as these incoming events happen and they're saying that we're gonna have more significant events uh, that's confirmed information coming through multiple agencies from ESA, from the uh, basically Science and Technologies Facilities Council. Now, let's go into this right here for in a future event. And give me a moment. I'm going to pull it up. And this is like confirmed information that's already been put out. Just when people are preparing for the sun to be at its high level UV situations going on. And this is what you can do. So preparing for a ground level solar radiation, individuals should take protective measures like wearing hats, sunglasses, tightly woven clothing, applying broad spectrum sunscreen, SPF 15, seeking shade, limiting sun exposure between 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. is also helpful. Stay informed by checking the daily UV index and avoiding tanning beds. So that's going to be very important because that's the peak time of the sun. Uh, and a lot of people don't take into account the peak time of the sun is when things are starting to elevate during these moments. Now, what else can you do here? Wear long sleeve shirts and long pants. Choose tightly woven fabrics. Darker colors offer more protection. Now, the reason why you're wearing long ones, because as the particles come in, the solar radiation particles come in, obviously they start to come down. And if they touch the skin, that's a little bit more uh, significant than when it's just touching your clothes. So head and eye protection. Use a wide brimmed hat to cover face, ears, and neck. Wear UV blocking sunglasses. So that's going to be very important. You got sunscreen. Apply broad spectrum. SPF 15 or higher. Reapply every two hours. Um, and what is the other step that you could take as well? Just exposure timing. Like during the peak time, and if you have to be out there, I mean, I guess try to be in some type of shade because that's probably going to be the best thing you can do. Um, so as the planes and everything else continue to have these stories come out where we're seeing they're losing control, uh, you have to ask the question, OK, what about my vehicle? Will my vehicle be in a situation where it loses control? Well, let's think about that. 
electrically the radio interference could happen to some vehicles yes because the airwaves and everything else starts to get a little bit scrambled from the different frequency disruption through the magnetic field now electric vehicles probably would be in more line of a different situation than gas powered vehicles so that's something to take a big note and account of as well um somebody what do you say about california there i'm looking at some of the comment sections here what people saying is subscribe stay tuned because we're gonna have a lot more of this incoming as the information comes out as we get more now here's something a little more interesting here as well because uh this was a little bit earlier off and i have to pull this up because there was some things happening in the atmosphere with that was recorded a little bit earlier before all this happened and the reason why it's important because there's certain areas where these things occur at and then you can understand that if they occur during the same timing this could give you hints and clues about what to be looking for so i'm going to go ahead and take you into this they did this uh venture and into the stratosphere it was just this year 2025 and they noticed this all start to occur and these strong convective storms over north america they call them overshoots they saw them and they said they can carry water pollutants from the troposphere into normally very dry stratosphere where they can have a significant impact on radiative and chemical process potentially including strat stratospheric ozone and if you look at the photo below you can see that i was taken from the iss showing the storms with anvil which typically near the troposphere level overshooting the top and a plume of serious ice clouds injected into the stratosphere by the overshooting top so the overshooting tops can reach uh, many kilometers above the troposphere in the stratosphere and the radiative effect they're talking about obviously if we have more situations with radiation in the atmosphere solar radiation incoming these things right here actually the cooling and reflecting of the sunlight starts to happen where did this happen at look right here you can see in the central united states this happened close to st louis missouri areas kind of almost by that new madrid fault and guess who were looking at this they said by combining next rad in GOS 16 observations, our overshooting tops will forecast atmospheric from the National Weather Service. The projection team was able to predict the location of outflow overshooting storms. So you can see where the plumes came up at. And that's interesting there that that's close to that New Madrid fault area where these overshoots were happening. So if we have the overshoots happening there, and then it's this radiative events that's affecting certain sequences in the atmosphere that could probably start to see ground level events happen there a little bit more significantly because those amplify some of the effects in the atmosphere so that's why i was saying that was something that we need to pay attention to and i'm going to continue to watch that uh, for all of you here now uh somebody says yes i'm in oklahoma we've seen them you seen the overshoots you're saying let us know that in the live chat here now here's another thing i wanted to, uh, to say i'm not saying that everything is connected but everything is happening at once and that's why we track it together here and if you give videos you give information out you help us find even more about these events so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to continue to track this and get more information into you right now i'm looking in the comments section. you see me looking down to check on your comments to see everything that's happening here uh and then some people said that there were certain things that would happen that I could write down and I'll put it at the, you know, maybe in the description of the video. So you can look at certain things that people said that they started to see. So, yeah, some people saying stand out of the sun is the, the best thing to do. Definitely um, be careful, be aware. And here you are right here in the live chat. So while we're here right now, though, everything that is happening, you want to support the channels that is putting out the information, helping you out. By the way, I got a birthday coming up December 5th. So I'm gonna drop the, I'm gonna drop the donation to support link. You can do that via PayPal. You can do that via Cash App. Yeah, I'll be 33 turns December the 5th. 
And yeah, anything you can send will definitely help out right now. It will definitely help out. I appreciate all support. Definitely in very much need of it. Like we said, these channels, everything that's, that we're doing right now, we've seen our most significant drop this year. A lot of you don't even know we're posting videos. I don't talk about it much, but I'm looking at everything. And on average, out of everything we did, the information was the best this year. But everything else was completely the worst this year. This was the worst year on average. And I've been contemplating all the different moves and different things that I need to do. I know that I put value into the community, but the only way that I can continue to do everything I do is because of you, because of all the information, because of the support. So when you look in the live chat after the video is over, Cash App, you'll see PayPal, you'll see Venmo, anything you can send, help me out. That'll be very much appreciated. Thank you for saying happy birthday, Paul, Paulo. Um, thank you, everybody, for the happy birthdays. Somebody says, my grandson is December 5th, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I appreciate that. Happy birthday to him, too. So, yeah, I'm going to continue to be here and put this out. I'm not saying I'm, not, I'm leaving. I'm just saying that everything you do helps me move and continue this mission. Because, like I said, I know that while we do all this, is going to continuously get much more uh, significant. And I just think that maybe we get phased out eventually. And it's really up to people if we stay here. Um, because that's really the concerted effort of community. Um, so, yeah, this is it's not been an easy year, but I'm continuously pushing through it for you, for everybody here. I'll be doing that. But just keep me in your prayers and keep me in your in your mind when you think of, OK, I know he's here for us, but can he continuously sustain what's happening through the system? And this has been the wide scale thing. So I'm just appreciating everybody here. Like I said, without you, I wouldn't even be doing most of this because you all have got me through a lot of stuff. So I appreciate every last one of you. Stay prepared. We'll have a lot more information coming.